Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, I'm going to be showing you three games in the T22. One from Help of a Bug, one from Beast uh, 508, I think, and one from Lego Expert. Uh, all of them are fine exponents of the T22, which is just an absolutely balls out, ridiculously good tank. <laughs> I'd just like to point out that I don't think this is a startling admission and anyone that's surprised by this has been living in a very dark, damp place for quite some time. Why is it so good? Well, it's got like the same DPM as the T62A. It's got better armor. Uh, it's got, I don't know, about the same kind of mobility. Um, and it's just really, really good. Uh, it's... <laughs> Six degrees of gun depression, a pike nose, spaced armor on the sides, the ability to reverse side scrape. Yeah, it's turrets pretty strong. Like, this is a jokingly good tank. There is a lot of these tanks featured in uh, various tournaments over the recent wee while. And the T22 and the Fosh 155 are kind of uh, seen over the past 12 months as tanks that have had a lot to do and a lot to say in the uh, tournament scene. And then you get people that can actually drive, <laughs> not like me, and you get wooey, hell of a uh, hell of an outfit to wear to the ball. The T22 uncatchable. Whoa, that was a lovely little bit of guesswork there. Did the maths and thought, you know what? Let's shoot one into. Oh, he's going to go up, try and get that six degrees off, but he doesn't want to expose himself. Lovely, lovely work. That is all about it. Uh, just getting shots over the front right drive wheel like an absolute superstar. And he knows where the Jaegeru is, so there's only the Waffle Tractor, and the Waffle Tractor's already spotted, so he's not too stressed about the, pff, the big threat on the flank. And... Again, we see another wonderful little bit of work there. Just holding back, not pushing down all the way. Uh, the real the real problem in situations like this is you, you can sometimes get a little bit of bloodlust and you go charging down. Oh, 420 Alpha. How good is that WZ121, by the way? Um, that tank is absolutely gorgeous. It can do the freaking business. Um, very good DPM, but 420 Alpha. Like... Hard to... Oh, and speak of really good DPM. Hello, WZ113. This is a drive and a half. Lots of good tanks. Lots of good players. Uh, lots of... Oh, this is going to hurt. Um, lovely bit of a turn there. Just got to the bounce. Could have possibly gone for something other than the standard round there, 420 Alpha, just to get some damage in. But this has been a phenomenal effort against a tank that can really pump out some damage. And what an incredible bra, says the WZ113. He is surprised uh, and very impressed. Obviously, that's what Blitz is all about. Everyone is like, everyone's like you rock. You are the best. I'm so happy to have been a part of your, uh, of your effort. And there's a lot of chat here, but not bad chat. Not a lot of the usual Blitz toxicity where it's like, ah, oh, you suck, man. Noob, coward. Um, no, it's nothing like that. The team is, like, uh, pushing. And you might wonder why. And I believe it's because this is a raiding battle. <laughs> and everyone in here is kind of like, I know what I'm doing, and I'm not about to yell at someone who, who's got nothing to do with the me problem that got me killed. There's the Waffle Me Tractor. Cops an APCR round through the noggin and is in possibly the worst position to be dealing with our Amigo here. He is coming up the mountain without a whole lot of mobility. Oh, that KPFPZ70 MBT Tankity Tank McTankerson not really in a situation to get involved here. Doesn't have a whole lot of penetration in the first place and what he does have though is a little bit of splash but that's not going to do much to the strong turret and the demeanor the set disposition that is a t22 uncatchable oh ho, ho, uncatchable catch that catch it between your eyeballs there is the ever-present 
threat. The tyranny of the point score at the top of the table, though, that is causing all kinds of consternation for our amigo here. And he's doing the right thing. He knows that the Waffle Tractor is in that cap circle. So he's got an opportunity to go down there and make hay. And now he's got to get back up to the Waffle Mick Tractor. 850, 854, 858. Oh, the Waffle has exposed himself. He wildly swings for the fences. 900. Flag says Jerry, but Jerry, there's no time. 32 hit points. The Waffle has got him. No, so close. Oh, 954. He's got to get in the cap circle if he gets through the cap circle. 974. He needs a HG shell. Someone do something. No. No. Oh, so close. What happened? What happened? Who won? Who won? Ah, they did. Sucks. Sucks, but excellent drive from LEGO Expert. Really, really good game. Uh, and though it is the lowest damage game of the three that I'm going to show you now, uh, that definitely doesn't mean it was the worst game of the lot. It was a hell of an effort. Had all the hallmarks of a great stage play. Uh, Terra, a very, very um, growth mindset protagonist. The love triangle that was the Waffle Tractor, the, the MBT-70, and the T-22 Uncatchable. Now, here is a lovely, lovely look at this tank in its knife-fighting best. In the middle of the flank... Bouncing shells, staying under the guns, making a fool of the T-54 because it's got such tough armor. The 54 cannot just get through. And look at the mobility on it. Moving around, using that pike nose. The grill wants to get involved. As soon as he fires one off, though, our amigo here will know that he is on for young and old. Look at this. The grill's looked away. Bad work, Pinocchio. And he sneaks one in. And the grill's fired. Oh, welcome to damage. Oh, this is where I get to just pour it in. Is he going to get one? He's going to get another one in here. He's just edging out. Tracks the grill in his spot. The 62A is going to take it. The grill's going to take one. And then the 54, mark my words, is going to take the next one as the Beast 508 pushes up. Oh, nice work there from the 54. A little bit keen from the Beast. He's got to clear this 54, and he does. Three on five. He's made an absolute mockery of the red team's flank effort. Uh, he has cleared tanks with a will. There is, however, no denying the fact that the odds are heavily stacked against him here as he starts pouring it in. Now, I like what he's doing here is change targets into the 62A because, like me, I'd rather face a big, slow, heavy tank like the 9001P than a very fast tank with a lot of DPM like the 62A. Now, it's three on two, uh, but it should be noted that the only tank that he can really reach out and touch right now, or rather, the only tank that he really wants to get a hold of is that 62A or the 50M, who the E50, who is at the top, because they are both one-shots. And while the E75 wants help, our Amigo just quite simply cannot stop and render assistance until he has cleared these grubs over here. Now, the 75 is all at sea, and the 62A is doing an excellent job of just making life difficult for the T22 Uncatchable, Mr. Beast. But he's made an error here. Oh, that was a good angle. That was impressive just to get the shot off. 57 heavy over there. Can the 62A make him pay? Nothing. The 62A doesn't get any damage in. And the 75, he's laughing and he's laughing. The merry laugh of the man who knows that he's done his best and kept that 57 heavy busy for quite some time. Now, Mr. Beast is going to be pumping down here. He feels like he's on a reload. 1,200 hit points in the tick. If he can just bounce one shot... 434, though, that's a high roll. So there's one. There's two more to go. He wants to tap him out. He wants to tap him out. This is going to be close. Oh, that's a low roll. It's in the hands of the gods. That's it. He's out. 130 in the bank. He gets free time. And free time means he's just going to basically sit here shooting this guy while he panics and wiggles backwards and forwards. Another outstanding game there and a huge effort. Three, five and a half K, 2,500 blocked and a real knife fight on the flank. This is why so many people want this tank because it just bounces a buttload of shots in these brawling knife fighting engagements. And that's really what you want out of a uh, big ass T10 heavy, uh, T10 medium. It looks good too. Looks good. Looks looks uncatchable. Maybe that's why I called it the uh, T22 uncatchable. This is a tough gig, but that is not a good spot to be in against the 54E1. He's got a little bit of gun depression. If he just go up a little bit higher, he'd certainly get those shots in the lower glaces, but he wasn't willing to risk it. A little bit 
mm, hands off there in his approach. Doesn't know our uh, our amigo help on my bug here if there is in fact a big ass TD at the back of the map. But he's decided he's going to find out. And the only way to find that out is to drive forward and risk it all uh, for the love of, love of a, a good woman. Uh, that's not good for the 5041. The fact of the matter appears to be that he is all on his Pat Malone up here and is dealt with accordingly. Now, help, I'm a bug, is about to go, help, I'm on your flank. And he's looking for those recalcitrant TDs, the tank destroyers that just want to have a little chill at the back of the map and see if they can't pour in the damage while taking absolutely no risks themselves. And he's found one. There's a Fosh 155 over there, but he does the right thing. And instead of pouring the damage into the helplessly immobile uh, Fosh 155, he starts pumping the WZ1114, which was a great career move there. And it's all right. There's still an Object 263 over here who is not interested. And a typical Waffle Track ticker sitting on a mound just... Uh, yeah. <laughs> just... I mean... At what point do you not notice that your flank is wide open? We've all been here. We've all had these teams where they're like just going to ignore the fact that there is no one left on the flank and the one person who went there is now dead and that he didn't die of natural causes. It wasn't like an explosion of the coronary artery. It was, in fact, two mediums that rolled up and shredded him and yet you're still just going to sit in the corner and pop shells at tanks that you can't see uh, and hope that someone else does all the dirty work for you. And that's how you end up in situations like this with one of the best knife-fighting TDs that Blitz has ever produced and the Object 263, the veritable YOLO wagon, the death-inducing, super-high DPM, very good armor profile, 50 kilometer an hour open wheeler from the Soviet-style tech tree sitting at the back, chucking up really rubbish APCR rounds at tanks that it shouldn't be firing at. And it's paved the way for an absolutely gorgeous effort here from help on a bug who is absolutely needing no help. Uh, if he's a bug, he's a bug that can really drive a tank to its furthest extremes. Now, that shot there has told him something. It's told him that the other member of the red team is hanging about at the back and is absolutely not a threat. So he doesn't have to really worry about that. The mouse there was on top of the thing doing what mouses do best, which is being a marksman. And help of a bug pumps him through the cheeks, not unlike a chipmunk that's just had a bar fight and uh, has copped one in those cherubish wide bits of muscle and gristle that a chipmunk uses to store its nuts in. That's where he's weakest. The chipmunk in the mouse is in the buttocks. Well done to help. I'm a bug with an absolutely monstrous effort there. Six and a half thousand damage. 60, 60 to 50 anyway. Uh, thanks everyone who took part in the T22 is still really OP festival that we've had here and uh, look after yourselves all. Stay safe on the battlefield. Festivus for the rest of us and until next time. Bye for now.